Okay, thank you very much. And yeah, welcome to our session uh, with the long title Shaping Sustainable Mobility in Peripheral Districts by Looking Through the Functional Urban Lens. Um, actually, behind this long title is the challenge we would like to tackle um, for planning for uh, mobility, sustainable mobility beyond the city borders involving and including surrounding communities or peripheral districts and suburbs uh, in this activity. Um, the session, this site session is um, a cooperation between three projects, two Interact Central Europe projects, the Low Car project and the Dynexability Central Europe project and the Horizon 2020 project. Eccentric which you might have heard of already if you have followed the Urban Mobility Days throughout the last days. Um, yeah, before we start with the presentations, um, just a very quick, um, yeah, the, or the housekeeping rules. So what we would like to ask you is to use the questions functionality if you have a question um, so that we could display it live and uh, make it visible for all participants. Uh, otherwise, we of course, also from the experience made with other sessions, we will uh, have a look at the chat functionality if there's something interesting coming up or if there's a question. In the session today, um, yeah, and maybe I have to introduce myself as well, is uh, my name is Wolfgang Backhaus. I work for Ruprecht Consult. I'm a team leader here for Collective and Intelligent Mobility and project manager of the LOCA project. And I have with me my colleague Marlene Damaro today, also from Ruprecht Consult, of course, and uh, she's also working in the LOCA project. I have Carsten Schult from the Leipzig Transport Company, uh, who's uh, uh, yeah deeply involved in the uh, activities in low carb around the Leipzig um, activities. And I have Carlos Veloga with me from the Technical University and GA21, who's a technical coordinator or technical co-manager of the Eccentric project. And in the background, last but not least, we have Anna Maria Baston. Uh, she will yeah, hopefully help us to get smoothly through this session without any further technical complications. So the session program is then um, structured according to this. I will give a very brief introduction and then we will have uh, presentations from the presenters I just mentioned. I don't spend too much time on this. And before we start, I would like to test one functionality because we have uh, also included a few polls. I would like to test the first poll question then, Anna Maria, if you could launch the first poll and see if it works. This looks good already, so we would like to know what is your background, where you're from, if you have a research background or from a city authority. And I will also answer it myself. So looks like that we have a lot of business and higher education people here with us. And unfortunately, so far at least, less local or regional public authorities, which would be the main target group, I guess, of both uh, projects. Maybe give it another few seconds to answer. And I think we can then, ah, okay, I see there are a bit more local and regional public authorities joining us, that's good. I think we can close it now, Anna Maria. Thank you very much. And then I would continue with a short and very short introduction. As I said, this session is a cooperation of the uh, Interact Central Europe Low Car Project and also the Civitas Eccentric Project. We are cooperating in this uh, session as we have more or less from a geographical scope the same the same uh, area in a as a focus in our activities in both projects. So low carb is focusing on mobility solutions and also planning uh, uh, um, solutions in four functional urban areas. So actually um, not an administrative 
uh, geographical scope, I would say it's more something you have to define. What is your functional urban areas? For example, based on strong commuting uh, relationships with these within this area. Um, and we were focusing on things like stakeholder engagement, uh, mobility strategies, but also have some pilots on low carbon measures. Uh, the eccentric project focused very much on more the relationship between uh, an urban center and the suburbs or peripheral districts and created um, plenty of measures and uh, which were implemented in the eccentric projects and will be then um, presented later by Carlos. So there's a bit of a delay, sorry. So this is actually the first uh, principle of the SUMP process, plan for sustainable mobility in the functional urban area. So we have to define what is actually the geographical scope or the scope of our planning activities. And this is just an example from Hannover, why this is very important. You see there, of course, for the city transport, a lot of movements, but also between city and uh, the surrounding areas in terms of commuters, but also not to forget actually interurban transport in this area, where you also have a high number of movements. So these are actually the, the trips, the daily trips we have in mind when we um, have the, or when we uh, set the focus for both of these projects, Eccentric and Civitas. And this decision was made that um, we should have um, actually a contextualized topic guide for this topic. So, uh, or planning for sustainable, uh, planning for sustainable mobility for functional urban areas and peripheral districts. So, the SUMP, the SUMP platform of the Com European Commission decided that these two projects as a bottom-up initiative would draft and develop such a topic guide with the results from our projects, which is in process at the moment. And where we also would like to invite all of you to become part of this exercise, uh, maybe providing good examples or review the document, provide feedback. I will come to this later again. So this is the work we are doing now at the moment, a topic guide on this specific topic. And um, the starting point was actually to identify really what are the challenges in, for planning for such geographical scopes. So suburban peripheral districts or the functional urban area level. Um, and then, like all the topic guides are structured, we see the eight SUMP principles in the light of such geographical scopes and the challenges and see what maybe needs to be done dif in a different way than maybe just planning for um, an urban core or a city. And also, of course, the um, SUMP cycle uh, with the phases and the 12 steps will be adapted to this um, context. And both projects, low carb and eccentric, will hopefully provide a lot of good practices, which then uh, give this document a more hands-on uh, character. So this was just for the introduction. Um, we will start now with the first presentation and actually just to start our journey in a SEMP cycle, it's actually when would you um, yeah, start to plan for such a functional urban area perspective. So maybe it is at the end of an of a SUMP process where you analyze what were successes and failures and you see, okay, actually we need to strengthen the functional urban area perspective or we need to involve more our peripheral districts and suburbs. Or you start to develop an SUMP from the scratch and you have identified already the need to do this for a functional urban area to involve more stakeholders, et cetera, et cetera. And therefore, we develop in LOCOP the, um, together with the Sums Up project, so another cooperation, the, an, an updated SUMP self-assessment tool, and my colleague Marlene Damara will now take over and present you the tool. The floor is yours, Marlene. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Wolfgang. Um, so uh, what I will present you today, as my colleague uh, Wolfgang Backhoff already said, is the SEMP uh, self-assessment tool. Um, which, um, 
uh, is a tool that helps uh, cities to identify strengths and weaknesses in their sustainable urban mobility planning process. And um, it uh, provides you feedback and inspires you how you can improve your mobility, mo mobility planning, both on the level of your municipality, but if you pre prefer to do so also on the level, level of your functional urban area. And it enables stakeholders in municipalities, but also beyond administrative borders to start a discussion process, how they can improve their cooperation, maybe within the municipality, uh, between the departments or between different um, municipalities, maybe even on the level of a, a metropolitan region. It's an online tool and it's free to use and it's quick and important to mention maybe that it's anonymous. Um, so we developed this tool in the context of two different projects, which is the low curb project that my colleague Wolfgang Backhaus just um, presented. It's an inter, uh, inter central Europe project and the Civitas uh, thumbs up project. And um, we had also a previous SEMP self-assessment tool that we revised. Why did we do this? Because of course, the SCMP guidelines were updated and we wanted to revise the previous SCMP self-assessment tool so that it corresponds to these guidelines. Uh, we wanted to make it usable also for cities who do not have a SCMP yet and want to develop one. And we also wanted to make it possible to include the functional urban area, which goes beyond municipal administrative boundaries into the planning process. We put a lot of work and effort in both projects into the update of the tool by integrating user feedback uh, to make it as usable as possible. And this is where you find the tool. Uh, you can see here the web link and you can also see what it looks like. Uh, so when you access the website, everything will be self-explanatory. Um, you will be guided on the left side. Uh, it's probably a little small now, but um, these are the uh, eight SEMP principles that the tool will guide you along when you go through, it, through the assessment. And um, it exists of um, tailor-made uh, questions for different starting points. It depends on what you want to do, what your planning situation is. There are cities that already have an SUMP that they maybe want to improve. There are cities that have no SUMP in place, or maybe you even want to and, uh, either check um, an existing SUMP on a FUA or metropolitan area level, or you want to start um, a regional, metropolitan, or FUA SCMP process. Uh, basically, everyone who's acquainted with the uh, mobility planning process in your city, FUA, or region will be able to answer the questions. Usually, usually these people are working for the transport planning department of the city, and it's um, or of the um, maybe regional planning institution and. Um, Using the tool will enable you to generally assess your mobility planning process, or um, it can give you guidance along uh, the complete SEMP development, but we think that uh, it is most suitable to be used in the start when you want to assess your mobility situation, when you want to define your planning, co planning context, and when you want to analyze um, uh, your problems and opportunity. Or when you already have an existing SUMP, you might want to see where you can improve the SUMP. Um, so um, what you can see here are graphs. These are spider graphs that will illustrate after the complete uh, completing of the tool, um, the analysis of um, the answers that uh, people have inserted into the tool. We have a graphic um, analysis in the form of a spider graph where you can see how your answers comply with the different um, SMP planning principles. 
and uh, what you will also receive is um, a written analysis as well as further guidance according to your identified weaknesses where the SCMP would need more improvement. Uh, what I show you here is the example of an analysis from a metropolitan region and several municipalities within this uh, metropolitan region that very recently, only very you know, few weeks ago, um, had a workshop where they used the self-assessment tool in order to identify areas of improvement for the mobility planning in the municipalities who all have no SUMP in place. And um, to also start the discussion about developing a metropolitan SUMP to explain you a little bit the process there was a contractor which is not mandatory everyone can do the process on his or her own but um, when you organize such a process with different organizations that complete the questionnaire then it can be useful to contract a moderator that organizes the process so that's what they did they had someone uh, um, explaining what SUMP is what the self-assessment tool is um, to all of the participants and then afterwards the contractor had individual workshops with every municipality uh, and helped them to fill in the tool uh, then uh, there was uh, the analysis that as well you have this automatic um, analysis process in the tool um, but the moderator prepared the results and had then a joint workshop uh, with all stakeholders based on these results and in the tool you have the possibility uh, to have your radar graph uh, for your own assessment as a result, but you can also compare the different answers. That what that's what you can see here on the bottom. We have the answer of one uh, stakeholder, and uh, on the top of it, you see uh, the comparison of different um, stakeholders. Here, we see uh, different municipalities that assess the same region. On my next slide, uh, uh, I, uh, you can see that the same process was applied by a city that is already advanced in the process that has a SUMP in place. And um, the objective here was to update their existing SUMP and to identify their uh, particular areas of improvement. Um, as you can see here, um, sectoral planning, so a better cooperation between departments was identified as uh, one particular topic where the city wants to further improve, uh, as well as stakeholder engagement. And since this was a SUMP on the basis of a city within the municipal boundaries, uh, it is of course clear that the FUA integration in this analysis um, did well <laughs> not have the best results, which is something that they want to work on. And here the process was um, 10 municipal stakeholders uh, from the same municipality filled in the tool. There was um, an analysis uh, process by also a contracted moderator, and then there was a joint workshop and a joint reflection of the results. And uh, important to mention is that we have the ambition to make this tool available to everyone um, no matter what languages you speak. So the tool is now available in all Central European languages. Apart from that, uh, also in other European languages. So we have, apart from English, now 12 languages um, in which you can use the tool soon to come are also the Greek and the Turkish versions. Thank you very much. Are there questions? Seems not to be the case so far. Thank you very much, Marlene, for the presentation. And uh, yeah, I think <clears throat> also from what we heard with the work for, with uh, cities and regions using the tool so far, it is obviously very helpful to, let's say, when you start a process, get a joint idea of uh, weaknesses, but also maybe strengths, but um, also to get a joint understanding of problems and needs um, 
with uh, yeah the involvement of different communities uh, and stakeholders. So I think starting such a process on a functional urban area level, uh, the self-assessment tool might be very beneficial and helpful. Thank you for this. So if you have any questions, yeah, please use the question and answer uh, functionality or the chat, which we will check also um, uh, all the time. Um, I would then continue with the um, presentation by Carsten Schult. He's a project manager from the uh, Leipzig Transport Company and was involved with a few other colleagues in the Leipzig team to develop the master plan uh, for the North area in Leipzig. And actually, in his presentation, he will, uh, if we continue now our journey, will show us more about the whole process following the first three cycle uh, steps or phases, um, really how to start such a process, the governance and cooperation uh, approaches they chose, uh, scenario building up to the joint action plan development in the end. And um, I'm really looking forward to the presentation, Carsten, and the floor is yours. Wolfgang, thank you very much. Can you hear me, Wolfgang? I hope so. OK, thank you. Um, from what I can see here, I see a delayed screen. Though my slides aren't yet on. Um, but it's continuing. OK, so I would love to start with the low carb project itself. It's an Interact Central Europe project and cooperates um, uh, 11 partners all across the Central European countries. We have six functional urban areas, which would lead you already um, to the result that um, within the project, um, several partners of one functional urban areas appear to work together. And this is exactly the case here with us back in Leipzig, we have exactly three local partners involved. Um, the Leipzig Transport Company, LVB, um, which I'm a part of. Um, there is the MDV, the Mitteldeutsche Verkehrsverbund, the Central German Transport Association, and the city of Leipzig with the Department um, uh, of Traffic and Engineering. Um, these were the, let's say, three solid partners of the project. And as soon as we started, we realized we should um, team up with someone else from the region. That is the so-called uh, Z1L. So that is the um, transport authority for trains in our region. Um, the some process uh, to develop the master plan or the action plan mobility for the North Rhine Leipzig wasn't the only output of this project. There is a lot of data strategy and a pilot action, which I won't go into detail uh, today. So let's focus on this uh, some process on the master plan. Um, as Wolfgang already told you, um, we <laughs> we 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 followed this some cycle more or less. Uh, <laughs> Not intentionally, but um, when I look now on, on this process from the um, perspective afterwards, um, it's we we merely follow the entire process throughout the first three phases of this four phase cycle. So um, we set up everything, uh, we analyzed everything, we put a lot of effort into strategies. Uh, we developed the actions, and now we are at the stage um, where we're preparing the implementation. Um, I hope I could continue with the slides. Ah, I see. Okay. Um, so you've seen already the sum cycle um, before. So here we are in the very first subphase, setting up work structures. That what has been done when I wasn't on board already. So. Um, the three local authorities teamed up um, established um, an institutional ownership such that there is a steering group at the very uh, top with the head of the companies or the authorities involved. We had some um, more technical experienced uh, project managers in, in the middle layer, what we could call the lo local project leaders, uh, again, from all three institutions and 
and completely new team was hired that uh, worked on the on all working packages, and all of them were distributed across all participating institutions. Uh, I think it was that was key to um, to the success of what we did, so that everyone in every question had the opportunity to go to access um, the experience of all institutions immediately. And therefore, it was a really, really um, key aspect to have uh, workers in each institution closely working together. Um, when we had this, um, we, we started in early 2018. And um, what we did, what we first did was um, to defining the scope uh, in, in several aspects. For of course the uh, the area we, we we would love to to work on was decided in the very first place. During the um, application form phase, um, the entire project aimed for another region uh, at the very bottom of of the city of Leipzig, at the very south. Um, unfortunately, at this stage. Um, this region in the south uh, has gained attraction anyways. So there was a new bus system rolled out when we were about to start. So we needed to reschedule to another um, project area and returned to the north, uh, which has the so-called Nordraum Leipzig, the northern industrial area of Leipzig. Um, telling from perspective today, this was a great decision. Because um, here we have much more interesting aspects uh, in this area than in the southern area, which is more, um, let's say, famous for touristic aspects with these lakes. In the north, however, we do have um, numerous um, companies, being at uh, DHL at the airport in the very west, um, running their, their European um, um, freight cargo hub. We have the car manufacturer Porsche uh, in the center of this area. We do have Leipzig Fair more to the to the east, and in the very east, there is another car manufacturer, uh, BMW, with all its suppliers. And of course, there are a lot of commuters, and this area matches nicely into um, this function area area um, perspective we put on it. Um, beyond the uh, regional scope, there was. Uh, in addition, a temporal scope added to the project. So we would love to um, talk about actions that would um, take place immediately after work, after the project. So a short-term perspective, something that could be rolled out and launched within one to two years after um, everything agreed upon. And there's a midterm phase with other projects that um, would need more planning um, um, involved. And of course, there are actions um, that involve more concrete, more infrastructure to be built. And this has from now on a perspective around the year 2030. However, this needs to be started again today. And, but we need the three uh, different timelines to, on the one hand side, roll out a solid infrastructure in the long run and on the short run, Offer something to our to our customers and to the to the companies I just named because um, they have other time plans uh, as let's say public um, um, planning agencies. So they want to have something in the very next year. Therefore, we agreed on uh, on actions that run on three different timelines. And. Um, we continued through the very first phase of the summer action cycle, and um, we approached the analysis phase. I just named everything, uh, all the companies and regions, subregions that are in this north round, uh, in this northern industrial area, um, talking to others, and uh, during um, a kickoff we learned a lot about it and in particular we learned uh, the current numbers of employers employees uh, in this area uh, yeah and in total it's uh, something like 35000 this is a pretty new area um, 
everything was launched there merely in the 2000s. Um, so this is a really um, astonishing um, de um, development there, and is it is about to go on. So the numbers of workers there is, is expected to increase. And uh, here's the scope of our project. Um, together with known stakeholders, for, in particular from the city of Leipzig, so we have involved the um, traffic uh, department, but other um, departments um, provided their input during our kickoff, such as the uh, city planning department, um, the economic, uh, leveraging the economic uh, funding um, part. So all of them told us what is about to come in the next years. And um, together with this, um, with this input, we hired um, ex an external expert to uh, run scenario processes and analyze what is about to come there in the next years. Um, with all the input provided during our kickoff, uh, we named the key challenges in this area. So there we have flexible shift time in the companies and flexible is again on the short term, which is um, those, those shift times change on a, I don't know, a weekly basis, I would say, and during the year. Prime, prime example currently is this um, Corona-19, uh, situation where in particular the production of cars was uh, more or less shut down during um, late spring early summer uh, this year and yeah we had to adopt to this as a um, transport service provider um, during ordinary uh, times we have a, a traffic capacity bottleneck during peak hours um, this is combined with the low demand and off-peak hours however uh, people expect to get there all day long, even though there is a really different um, demand between peak and off-peak hours. We have the problem of the last mile. Um, the industrial sites, or let's say the, the doors to the industrial sites, are pretty distant to our rapid transit network. So there is some, some distance between a kilometer or four. And yeah, it's a, it's a classic last mile uh, problem in here. And in addition, we have traffic connections with that involves changeovers and long traveling times. Um, I would love to put something in here which didn't match the story, but it matched um, uh, chronologically. Um, we started in early 2018. Uh, in autumn 2018 was, as every year, the European Mobility Week. We used this occasion um, to get into the contact with our potential customers and with the companies. So what we offered to them was a lottery, um, reproduced flyers that sum up uh, the traffic offers uh, that are all around in, in the, both the sub areas, more to the east and more to the, to the west. We came to the companies themselves and provided on-site consultation and conversations um, to get in touch um, with, with important people within the company or with, with all the ordinary workers. Um, we offered um, free tickets to get them to our booth. And uh, that was a really, really valid input on the one hand side for developing actions in the long run and in addition it was great to make the uh, to open the communication channel to the uh, important persons in the companies so now we had a really short uh, connection to them uh, we have their numbers uh, they we offered them something in the very first place and now they are more um, avid to join our um, our events, our discussion rounds, our panel discussions on measures. So we had a, so to say, a, a foot in the door. Um, yeah, in addition, some more people traveled with us after this European Mobility Week in 2018, since there is already an existing offer, of course. 
um, what I already mentioned during analysis phase, um, we hired external expertise. So we hired an um, external uh, engineering company from Dresden who were already involved in this region, providing studies on, of course, I guess you know it, on the road network. So uh, that was historically uh, how the process started. Um, Porsche and uh, BMW had problems during peak hours with their road network. Um, people, employees were delayed uh, coming to work. So uh, they urged um, investments uh, in the road network. And the way it goes here, then studies are released what, to analyze the situation, identify uh, what, uh, what crossings should be improved. And um, this has been done by this um, engineering company. And now it turned out uh, you, we, you, you cannot count on, 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 uh, on cars only. And uh, we broadened the scope of all the studies and uh, come up here with uh, public transport, with bicycle riding, with intermodal um, public um, ways to get there. So this company um, analyzed the, the area and was deeply involved in the scenario process and modeled um, what different affinities to modes of transport would result in numbers of, of cars, of bikes going there day by day. Um, but we started, of course, with, a, um, with an analysis of the status quo. And what you should see here is that the red shares of this pie charts um, is car use. So um, despite Leipzig itself or the city core has a pretty decent share of sustainable transport modes, it was completely, it is completely different um, in this peripheral region. Um, this is due to the challenges I just named and what we learned from the functional urban area perspective, only let's say, half of the employees there come from the city of Leipzig itself. So new traffic offers um, should put into focus the connection um, to rural areas, to smaller cities, to adjacent cities, because um, half of the employees there um, origin not from Leipzig, but from everywhere else. And at the end of this analysis phase, we came up with general goals. Um, everybody agreed on, all the uh, stakeholders involved. So we the, the goal was to develop a master plan with actions involving everything that is already going on, um, every, everything that uh, other departments worked on. And the, the aim should be a high share uh, of um, eco-friendly modes of transport. Um, you, you, you guessed it, uh, the name of the project is low carb. So at the end of the day, uh, we, we aim for a massive reduction of uh, CO2 equivalent emissions. And um, on the other side, um, this, none of those actions, actions would come to success if you don't look at um, the employee, employees and their mobility needs. So you have to address, you have to know them, you need to address them. And as I mentioned in the very beginning, there, there's a high demand in uh, uh, peak hours and a low demand in uh, off-peak hours. However, um, they expect something like a 24-7 service and you should come up with solutions that account for that. And here is something that is the main selling point to the companies involved in, in the northern area. So you want them to, uh, to have their just-in-time production ongoing and ongoing. So the main selling point is what we do here in the promotion and extension of sustainable modes of transport is prevention of gridlock that their own um, uh, supply traffic could run without, without obstacles. And we agreed on, on the time scope I mentioned. So here in green, we have on the very low the project of low carb itself. We have short-term actions 
in, in gray, we have middle term actions in, in, in blue, and long term, something around 2030 uh, in red. Uh, then we started the scenario process, and we realized um, in the very beginning that we missed something. Uh, we missed a decent um, stakeholder analysis that goes beyond the well-known stakeholders. Um, the well-known stakeholders were involved in the kickoff of the project and provided input, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, however, there are others involved that appeared during the project, and um, we identified them by an um, interest-power diagram. We clustered them and developed a strategy, strategy how to deal with them during um, the involvement process that you could see here on the right hand side and this was really really um, important to set an internal um, schedule for mi milestones uh, when do you present what to whom we eventually we um, talked about scenarios and uh, what we learned here is something that is easy to talk about in the very beginning is the model share. Um, it's easy to model what, um, let's say, a predefined goal, a predefined model share would um, yield in terms of actual travels, of actual travels by cars, of, of bicycles on the road, of, of users of public transport. So therefore, we decided to go for the model, uh, for the model share. And uh, we provided a number of, of um, scenarios going from continuing what we have now, which you see on the very left-hand side. And uh, we have an increasing amount of more challenging, more um, shifting towards uh, sustainable modes of uh, mobility. Um, the most... Um, visionary um, um, approach here is might not appear very visionary if you compare it to inner city um, model shares. However, we needed to account for the effect of people living in rural areas. So, of course, we adapted the um, model share of Leipzig citizens to what is uh, aimed for in, in other documents, but um, we agreed upon that people living in remote rural areas will, for quite some time, stick to their cars. There was a very, very long process, and it was involved convincing um, partners um, very, very well. And we came up um, with a vision that was... Um, Pretty challenging, I would say, and we convinced a lot of people and incorporated their um, their aspects in the models. But challenging in terms of that we um, um, increase the number of users of uh, bikes or public transport um, by factors, something like two, three, four. So it's not an increase of ten percent or something, but even more. So here, here's one um, example you could easily see. Uh, we stick to the numbers of cars going there today, and um, we have the same number of cars in 2030. And all the growth that uh, we would see in the area is attributed to sustainable um, modes of transport. So that was pretty challenging. But at the end of the day, everybody agreed on, and we needed this uh, challenging goal to justify um, expensive measures. And this worked out. So here we turned um, to the phase where we devised measures. We incorporated local knowledge. We had a look from the kickoff on ongoing projects. We get in got inspired by other best practices. Um, it focused on the multimodal aspect, since I mentioned earlier, there is this last mile problem, and we would love 
to uh, offer um, traffic solutions that gives opportunities to everyone. That means go from the S-Bahn station to your workplace by bus, go by bike, um, go by an e-scooter, whatever you like, or increase um, um, the, the number of um, pedestrians and use different levels of feedback loops. So we had this project leader feedback and in addition, as every one of us was in the different institutions, we, um, we got feedback from our um, technical colleagues. At the end of the day, this took from the very beginning to the uh, compilation of all these packages of measures, it took something like one and a half a year. The, because there were measures uh, uh, that we had in mind from the very first day, but to compile everything and to make it graspable and to agree it on, it uh, took a little bit longer. So we have again the short term measures here given in, in gray, something uh, midterm in blue and long term in red. And we compile we, we packaged um single measures to packages together to um that you can sell it much better to uh, um, and, and and convey the idea of what is behind so we have bus measures we have a, a package on bicycle infrastructure we have um a package on a tramway construction we have a package on communication and um that was agreed upon uh, within the project and with the broader um, um, with a broader uh, frame of of stakeholders. And that was the stage, let's say, half a year ago. And now we're at the point of um, preparing the implementation. And this is more or less the crucial phase as the Next uh, task are um, the most difficult ever. So we're about to arrange an ongoing structure to, to have this maintained, what we have. Um, we care for additional funding, since all of this has been funded by low carb, by the project uh, of uh, Interact. Um, and we apply for funds for the realization. We are deeply involved in the strategic process of funding leverage. Um, we have plans for the short-term realization. And what is a major goal now is to involve our North, North area companies in the financing of this. And now we think we have a great way to go because we are applying for a huge amount of funding for the launch of the short-term measures, have them run for two years, present to the um, to our companies, this is a great way. And during those two years, two to three years, um, convince them to work together with us in the financing and then the continuation of what we have rolled out um, in the very first place. With this, let me um, briefly sum up what we've learned um, so far. So some process work well, even though we, we, we didn't do it on intention in the very first place. Um, we use, you should use it as a guideline and not uh, stick to it to the sketch very, very uh, harshly. So as you see, um, we did the detailed stakeholder involvement a little bit later, but from our perspective, it was no problem involved since we had the uh, all stakeholders for the analysis uh, 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 at the table in the very beginning. Um, w when you set up the, uh, the, the working structure, distribute it across the involved institutions. That's a great way to look beyond borders, since my impression was there were already some prejudices across uh, the different institutions. And if you have a team that works institutional, inter-institutional, it's a great way to look beyond borders, be creative, and um, tear down this, uh, this prejudices. Um, you should consider new ways of mobility, so it's not <laughs> lots of tons of concrete. 
maybe it is in the very end, but um, for example, e-scooters and the classical car and new ways of bike sharing, all those modes of traffic have been considered and are part of, of the master plan today. Um, I recommend setting ambitious goals and a vision to justify uh, ambitious measures and to, to, to get support for development of actions. Um, involve all your participants physically. For us, it was possible since most of this happened before Corona, but um, yeah, meeting people physically makes a lot of things much more easier. Um, and I would love to point one thing out once more, use events uh, such as European Mil Mobility Week to get into contact um, with your customers and to make contacts to important stakeholders in your process. Okay, uh, so a concluding remark, which um, sum up, uh, well, which we are, which are really proud of. Um, one of the stakeholders uh, mentioned it. So it, something like, if it wouldn't exist, we must have invented it. And by it, he refers to the local uh, low carb project, which is something like the project team. It was us. It was the the process to develop the master plan. Um, and to leverage to another uh, broader perspective. So he refers to some process for the Nordhorn Leipzig. Okay, with this, I'd love to say thank you. Of course, this has not been done by myself uh, only. We were a team of three to four colleagues. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And I would love to take your questions now. Thank you very much, Carsten, for this uh, very comprehensive presentation of your journey through the first uh, phases of the SUMP cycle and your experiences made. Um, yeah, I think if we could maybe start first um, the second poll and then we see if there are more questions for you. So there is a poll on the question, what do you consider as main challenges for sustainable urban mobility planning in functional urban areas? So after you, you have heard Carsten's presentation, maybe you can compare this to your own experiences. So I made on I made my, my selection. You can also do your selection, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I submitted already. And of course, for me it's uh, the financing of measures, since that's that's now the, the urging task we face uh, at the moment. Um, but let's see how the others uh, react to this. <coughs> It seems that uh, financing, but also um, the part you you were referring to in your first part of the presentation, institutional, institutionalized cooperation frameworks is really a, a challenge and an issue here. Yeah, that happened this. here in Leipzig before I was on board. So I can't comment so much on that. But I think what helped a lot is to have this imposed frame by the European project. Mm -hmm. So um, the institutions were forced to team up since they applied and, and were rewarded this, this funding. Yeah, and then yeah, you have the funds and the money glues you together. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice to hear. And it's, it's actually a good, good uh, yeah, feedback also to the commission about the, 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 the benefits of European projects. Um, I would like to highlight maybe two things. One is the, I think it was really interesting what you mentioned about the, the process of getting a joint vision of a modal share goal or mm -hmm. of a modal split goal. I think this was really interesting. And as we heard yesterday also in the closing plenary that the commission is about to uh, establish a kind of sustainable urban mobility indicator set where also modal split is a part or one indicator, I think. We also need to have a deeper look here how this can really work for functional urban areas where this process is much more complex than just mm -hmm. for a city. And uh, also very interesting, I think, is your cooperation with, let's say, your project partners, but then also with the neighboring community, Skoidits, I understood, and in particular, these big companies you mentioned. I mean, uh, there's a high integration of company-based mobility management in your plan, I guess, but uh, how was the cooperation with these 
companies. I mean, I could imagine that partly this is just they plan and do things on their own and uh, present you maybe more accomplished facts or was this more really a co-creation process or a joint development? Um, I, I could talk hours about that. <laughs> um, so first thing to mention is they have another uh, timeline in mind when they, when they talk to you. They, they, they approach, when they approach you, they have urgent needs. Something like, oh yeah, we, we we gained another branch of production here. We in three months we will have 200 new employers. That's double the amount of our of our employees, and we have night shifts. And can you do something on that? And that's the way it worked. Let's say the last 15 years, and this was unsatisfying from a public transport provider perspective. So therefore, we would love to come up with an in integrated solution and um, so there, there there's limited understanding or no not un understanding is there but there's um, limited um, commitment to strategic plans in the very first place mm -hmm. and that's why we incorporated incorporated in this plan short-term goals something that they can more easily count on in the very first place so so and these short-term measures um will will fulfill their their agreement on the entire process mm -hmm. and um, and of course it's not the companies they are there's they are differ greatly for example there is the dhl hub at the airport and they have a um, not so attractive salary i get i would say and of course they know that and they provide everything they can in terms of public transport tickets bicycle schemes everything they can to attract their workers and to attract their workers and get them there with sustainable modes because they just don't own cars due to their salary and uh, at the other end of the spectrum, of course, there are the premium car manufacturers here. Um, however, there is commitment, for example, from, from one of them. And they are pushed by their suppliers, which feature the same non-attractive salary. And yeah, so you should, my perspective on that is you should um, show them their shared problems and that they belong together even though they are different companies but they are tightly connected through their supply chains uh, if the supplier uh, works good then um, the oem itself is uh, happy as well so you should raise the awareness of the problems of the supplier to the oem and therefore get attention mm -hmm. to the problem and commitment Okay, thank you very much, Carsten, once again for this uh, presentation. And uh, to give Carlos enough time, I would uh, jump quickly to his presentation now. Um, as we have seen, Carsten focused more on the three phases. We are now coming maybe to a more hands-on presentation, and Carlos will present a lot of measures which have been implemented in uh, in the eccentric project, and also provide first insights on results and impacts of these measures. So. Carlos, the, the floor is yours. Can't hear you. I think maybe you're still muted. No. It's now it's OK. You hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay, okay. please uh, continue. Sorry about that. Something, some problem. Uh, thank you very much to the organizer for the invitation to this side session. I try to adjust the to the to the time. Let's go with it. Uh, I want to to begin saying that the, the, all the, uh, the this presentation and all the results and the conclusion have been prepare with Isabella Velázquez, that is my partner here. We are, both are 
uh, technical co-managers of the of this uh, project. Uh, let's begin with a wide scope of the project. I mean, I, I guess that some of you have the had, had the occasion to to hear about it in these uh, days, but I uh, just uh, uh, have a, a, a very general outlook. If we can begin with the title of the project, Innovative Solution for Sustainable Mobility of People in Suburban City Districts and Emission-Free Freight Logistics in Urban Centers. And I think it's a very appropriate uh, title because it covers uh, very well the two challenges of the, of the project. First one is about sustainable mobility in the peripheries beyond urban centers. And the second one is about uh, clean fleet and selling goods distributions through city centers. Today we are dealing, of course, with the first uh, challenge and uh, the measures uh, from Madrid that I'm going to present are uh, focusing on this, on this challenge. And I used to uh, take the advantage of the title to begin uh, to, to, to uh, stress the importance of the concepts because the word suburbs, uh, uh, sub suburban city districts, sometimes we have, uh, we, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, seen that uh, there are some, some, sometimes there are some, uh, some problem, some confusion about, uh, about the, about this term. Let's, uh, go on with the with the project the project uh, covers it's been uh, uh, the, the common work from five cities madrid uh, munich uh, stockholm turku and, and rus it's been coordinated by the city of madrid uh, around 100 experts we've been 30 experts we have been working uh, directly on the project about uh, all in in uh, indirect permit we, we we can count about 100 experts. We have developed 51 measures. Uh, I will explain then which work package are they, uh, we have uh, uh, packed them on. And uh, we have been in close partnership with the private sector, sector and the universities. And uh, of course, uh, the COVID-19 one has um, uh, appeared just yes, in the last phase, uh, phase of the project, but nevertheless, we have tried to to we to uh, to apply the lessons learned to 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 tackle with it. And now, I'm, we are in the last phase of the project in the in the dissemination phase. So uh, all the measures are implemented and evaluated. Uh, this is how. Uh, the structure of the of the project has been uh, developed. We have, as you can see, we have six different work packages covering all the scope. I think they cover all the scope of uh, sustainable mobility uh, is uh, thematics, inclusive urban planning and mobility management, mobility as a service, enable safe walking and cycling, efficient and clean public transport solutions, promoting the uptake of clean vehicles and uh, urban freight logistics. As you can see, there's a very balanced distribution of this work package among the, the five cities. This is one that was one of the goals of the, of the project to cover them and to, to have a transversal knowledge about, about it. The, the uh, average is uh, 10, from 10 to 12 measures by city and by uh, work package. Uh, the question uh, is, uh, uh, I think this question is important. What what are urban peripheries? As I was saying before, sometimes there's some confusion confusion about the term suburbs. Depending, there's there's some slight different uh, interpretation depending on the cultural and the, even the academical context. So I think for us it was very important to define where clearly what is the real the context and the 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 the, 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 the goal of our project so this is a, a definition some of, of, of what are urban peripheries they are neighborhoods it is very important that are 
of the city and they are attached to urban centers. That is very important when we speak about urban peripheries is these peripheries where the, the so to say, the bus, uh, the, the urban bus gets. They are served so by urban public transport networks. Most of the service and equipment are exclusively local. This is the usual thing. And uh, that does not mean that there couldn't be a, a, a central facility in a, in a periphery, but it's not the usual thing. The residents in the periphery have to go, so to say, to the opera or for a lot of the administrative uh, procedures, they have to go to the urban centers. So the bulk of the displacement are radial in nature, both both towards urban centers and towards metropolitan areas. This is important too. Many of, many of the displacements are towards the urban center, but there are two through uh, towards the metropolitan areas. And so, uh, and an important thing that they are the cross, the crisscross areas for the displacement from urban center to metropolitan areas. And another feature is that the transversal displacement and transversal uh, trips among urban peripheries are usually difficult due to the to the lack of mobility infrastructures and lack of continuity of a stage for walking and, uh, and cycling. And if we are defining uh, urban peripheries in such a way, this uh, suburban district, it's important to have which are the, the 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 other areas we are dealing with on the on one side is the urban centers from the uh, point of view of, of of the mobility they have very uh, clear characteristics and the other side have the the different uh, layers of different uh, rings of the metropolitan areas the urban centers are located around the original nuclei of the cities this is the case in europe a medieval city there's the 19th century city around them and this is usually what we call and the 19th century and the first of 20th century around this original nuclear this is where the urban centers are they concentrate most of the urban services and facilities at the service of the entire city this is why uh, uh, peripheries have to go to the center to, to this uh, facility. There is a greatest diversification and concentration of, of economic activities a, with a, a high added value. This is important because this is reflected in the in the land prices. Uh, they are considerably higher in the in the urban centers, and they attract a large part of the total urban displacement of the whole city. And even as I said before, from the metropolitan area. On the other side, metropolitan rings are the outermost circle, circle of the metropolitan regions, generally are separated from the properly urban peripheries by areas with a low level, level of occupation and urbanization. They are served by radio consenting motorized road networks and suburban commuter transport networks. They constitute a heterogeneous reality made up of a great variety of types and urban fabrics, industrial areas, metropolitan facilities, loud dances, and hosts uh, whose main common feature is a range of distance to the peripheries and to urban centers. This is a very, sometimes very difficult even to, to characterize and to, to put a name to, to, the, uh, uh, to some of the, these heterogeneous areas in the in the regional, in the metropolitan areas. There's a, a, a German word, uh, this is vision stat, and it says, I think it's very, very, a very good approach to understand what is happening in these areas. And it's important to say that this was not the, the goal of our, of our eccentric projects. So, uh, as I said before, majority of displacements are radial in nature towards urban centers, crossing urban peripheries. Well, this, uh, I have to say that these uh, basic premises and these are in part uh, the, uh, the framework in, what, in which the, uh, the project was conceived, was developed, and also a sort of lessons learned. So we have a, it's a feedback procedure between, in, in, in the knowledge of our, our field of intervention. So it's important to say that 
in the first uh, place that periphery is a spatial category that is defined in relation to low connectivity and long distance to central services and resources. It's very important to have this in mind. Both hyper, hyper density and urban sprawl phenomena occur in the outskirts of the city. But the consequence and the problems and the issues relating with these two phenomena are sometimes they are radically different. And so they, 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 they have to, to, to be tackled with uh, different measures. The peripheral areas can be, uh, these areas in a special a long distance from the urban center can be of high or low income level. And so land prices do not follow a simple center periphery gradient. And there are jump in prices. This is a very uh, typical phenomenon in the growth of cities along the 20th century. This, uh, uh, the creation of, of uh, suburban uh, high income uh, uh, suburbs in the outskirts of the city, creating value between the, in this, uh, uh, so, uh, empty areas. Mobility problems in low income peripheries are mainly due to lack of public and private investment in infrastructure and facilities and a lack of good uh, initial planning. And the greater the proximity and the diversity of the central service and jobs to the residents, the greater the sustainability of, of uh, urban space in terms of panty functionally, a mix of uses and reduction of mobility nets is important. It's uh, very, very important. So the greater the distance, the greater the speed necessary to access to central services and greater, of course, for consumption and GIG emissions. Which are so the main challenges for mobility, equity and sustainability in urban peripheries? And we can divide them in urban, political, economic and cultural. And uh, we have, they are very narrowly related with, with what I have uh, just said. So urban challenges, uh, low income urban peripheries are comparatively monofunctional and they are poorly connected with central city service. Urban density, as I said before, is not homogeneous. New development areas have a long period of very low mobility efficiency. This is the case in the Madrid. This is a very clear case with the new developments around Madrid. There is a scarcity of public space on peripheral areas to host all the needs related with the new identified priorities. Which are political challenges? Well, the first one is an uh, uh, it's, it's uh, related with the cultural also. It's the, the investments in central city are more political, profitable than in peripheries. It's much easier to say when uh, that we are going to make a very, a, a very glamorous intervention in the center of the city than in a, in a periphery that nobody knows anything about it. Economical challenges, low land prices in urban peripheries contributes to urban is problem. That is a, 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 a urban problem too. Cultural challenges are related with what we have seen in these days about, uh, about the mobility behavior of the residents. High speeds and large size of vehicles are yet culturally associated to high social status. Everybody has to have a car, not because it needs, but because it is a symbol of a status and it is a, a, a a reality. Quality modes are yet culturally associated to low social status. E active modes are not generally considered uh, as transport modes. Uh, which are the basic objectives? This is important because this is all, all the objectives we have considered in our project, in, in Accenture project. In uh, relating regarding urban planning, and uh, this, uh, well, I, I I have to begin saying that uh, the the goal, the, the, the golden goal is uh, to to get the whole city after 15 minute city. There's a, there's a lot of, uh, of talk about the 15 minute city. Well, I, I say that it would be the golden goal for this uh, for, for as a framework. So in urban planning, we have to guarantee mix of use to reduce com commuting. We have to extend urban sustainability and quality to the whole city, we had to create opportunities for population connectivity. 
with re regarding mobility planning, we have to, to offer a rich model share with high coordination with uh, with uh, uh, between modes, uh, a wise multimodality, eh, including, of course, shared services and new mobility, mobility service. We have to establish a clear prior clear prioritization with active uh, modes in the in the trips, and we have to guarantee the continuity of uh, of the networks of active modes and the integration of these uh, uh, active modes networks with the uh, public transport. And with respect to communication planning, it's important to, to, to boost this uh, change in behavior, to create awareness about the need of reducing the need of mobility in order to get better, uh, better accessibility, accessibility for all. Let's go on to see how we have tackled with all this in, uh, in eccentric project. This is a general outlook of the special problems we have in the, the special uh, reality that we have a take with in uh, in the project we have two two different kinds of peripheries the development areas where the uh, main challenge is how to integrate sus sustainable mobility in the urban planning and the other side we have consolidated these uh, consolidated areas as is the case of madrid where the challenge is a uh, is a, a different one is how to redesign public space for sustainable mobility so it's how to say how how to to change the the the, the pace there. Here you can see uh, the Madrid, and you see in doing this uh, the the red circle is the area or the the lab area of the of the project. Uh, some cipher some numbers about Madrid. Uh, the city center has one million. The municipality more than three million. And uh, we, the regional area, the re municipal area is almost 6 million. So uh, the car ownership rates are around 400 uh, each uh, uh, 1,000 habitants. And uh, as could you, you can see here, the south area of the city has a lower public transport standards and it has all the problems, the usual problems of, uh, of the periphery that we have seen in the, in the first slides. How is Madrid uh, addressing this challenge? One part he has in, uh, included them in the general city strategies. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, strategies made here along this year that have uh, contributed to improve the situation in these peripheries, the plan A for air quality, the pedestrian mobility director plan, the bicycle mobility director plan, and a lot of uh, urban regeneration strategies. And uh, regarding the eccentric project, the whole project is uh, is based on this idea uh, it, that is expressed in the uh, in the objectives of the uh, I have uh, stated before, and and so we have tried to cover the mobility mon mon management strategy for vulnerable groups, the pedestrian friendly public space outside the city center, and enable enable cycling outside the city center. Of course, we have uh, uh, the, uh, on the 51 uh, measures of the whole project and, and the 11 measures of Madrid, we have uh, deal with electromobility, we have uh, deal with uh, uh, application, IT application, et cetera, but I'm going to center my, uh, the rest of the presentation in the, uh, in the perifer more peripheral measures. First one, uh, one of the, the important uh, features of the project is the engagement of the stakeholders and citizens. In several of the measures, we have addressed vulnerable cities as, as, a, as new target groups for mobility management action. And we have had very successful action of co-creation uh, of uh, uh, school students with aged people and of uh, with a, a, a very good results in in uh, in the in the change of behavior in the laboratory area. Uh, other another uh, batch of of of, of a feature of our project is uh, is based on the integration of public space, and we have a lot uh, we have made a lot of redesigning for safe work and cycling. We have uh, designed a 
uh, a walking and cycling network interconnected for the lab area and some of this uh, stretch of this network have been uh, have been uh, advanced and are in the implementation uh, phase and one of them is uh, complete and is very uh, very uh, it has a lot of impact in this uh, for the qualification of this uh, lab area is the called the watching points promenade the paseo de los miradores de valleca is a is a a, a project trying trying to create uh, uh, a very uh, quality and identity uh, local identity uh, promenade along uh, this uh, lab area in this one of the places where you can enjoy uh, beautiful beautiful uh, views from all, all madrid and this is this uh, is uh, resulting in a in a very beautiful uh, uh, project another another pack of of actions there and of the measures have the focusing in uh, in a sort of pilot uh, not not small but the middle uh, sites a uh, pilot action in, in Vallecas we have a uh, testing a new si signaling system that is uh, thought for for all Madrid we have made uh, the first pilot actions there in Vallecas trying to 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 put to put in the in the in the foreground the the information about pedestrian uh, facilities and pedestrian networks we have made a, a new ordinance campaign focusing very much on pedestrian and it has been uh, all spread all in this uh, lab area we have a uh, made a redesign of a public space with seniors participation covering all the aspects related with the quality of a public space and we have related uh, on other of the measures in Madrid is uh, dealt with uh, uh, tools for managing objective and su uh, subjective uh, the, the perception of, uh, of uh, safety and the real conditions of safety and mobility safety. The main results in, uh, in our city, it's, uh, we, can, uh, we are very, very proud of TEN. I think it's been a very successful project uh, Counting with the difficulties of the of the uh, we have uh, encountered, we have been uh, we have uh, got an increment of walking, and one uh, eight point five uh, percent more walking in the aged people, and three point four percent more sustainable travels for children, teens, to children and and teens to schools in the living lab. There's been a high acceptance of the of the pilot actions and uh, for part of the residents uh, we have a, a rich a decreasing of 30 40 percent of the yearly emissions of of uh, co2 and eox uh, we have de decreased uh, uh, the accidentality of cycling in 35 uh, percent and there's a bit of, uh, there has been a high engagement of the stakeholders and residents and uh, the subjective perception of safety in the living life for the aged people went from three to uh, to three point nine in a scale of, of one to five is in a, a, a meaning a, a, a 30 a 30 percent some conclusions and lessons learned one of them is about about public space place making is the word in this case they, we have make it's, it's very relevant to make more room for safe, active mother, modes for green the public space as well for shared, shared services, for the revolution of the freight set off by the e-commerce and for the new mic micro mobility. And we have to, to to get to a more user and resident friendly and a, a mobility. <laughs> Local administration. The role of city administration is paramount. Has been identified as paramount because we are dealing with uh, 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 a lot of planning and of course uh, we, we have to, to to have in mind that uh, the needs of public space depends in a great part in a big part from the local administration participation on the other side is a, a very important one we we have had a great deal of this in our project the permanent dialogue with not only with this the the stakeholders and usually 
we we think the stakeholders are private and uh, and research and them, um, but also with um, and mainly with the with the the vulnerable groups and all the all kinds of the residents. Very important. It is. It has been mentioned along this uh, session a shared vision of the future. Participate, a participation, inclusive approaches, and even co-creation are necessary to make uh, to possible a change without a negative impacts and strong reaction. So this is very important to have a, a very a common vision about what we uh, where we want to go. Management, communication, and marketing are very uh, are uh, important tools to 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 tackle with uh, the change of uh, of behavior related with the mobility, and of course, nevertheless, last but not least, monitoring and evaluation. It's very important to to get out knowledge uh, from what we are doing, and we have to to have a, a permanent feedback about what we are doing, about if what uh, what works and what doesn't work. So thank you. Sorry, I had to go. I try to go as fast as possible to to cover, not, not cover the time. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Carlos, for this nice presentation. And I think it was, uh, yeah, fits nicely and complementary to what we heard also from, from uh, Carlos from Leipzig. Uh, addressing, let's say, another target group here with vulnerable groups and also other measure types, more soft measures for cycling and walking. But as you said, it comes back to participation of all stakeholders and uh, a shared vision in the end. So thank you, thank you very much for this. Um, we don't have much time left. So is there a question I would like to ask to my colleagues? Because for me, the question and answer functionality disappeared, unfortunately. So, Marlene, is there a question? Yes, hello, Wolfgang. Um, yeah. um, there is a question uh, to Carlos. Okay. Compar um, uh, Carlos, comparing your project to low carb, um, we saw that um, in the low carb project, there was a strong involvement of the city uh, public transport uh, organizations and the public transport association. Uh, considering a wider regional perspective. And we actually wonder what was the role of public transport actors in the measure development in Eccentric? Well, uh, it was paramount. I, I didn't, uh, sorry, I didn't mention it, but uh, here we have the regional uh, consortium and the, uh, both the, the, the municipal uh, transport agency and the and the, and the regional consortium of transports have been uh, in the in the foreground of the project. They have been in somewhat in in some of the measures. They have, they have been even leading leading the project. Of course, I have not spoken about uh, the uh, much about uh, public uh, transport. Maybe this is a there's a among the fifth the. 51 uh, measures and the 11 measures in Madrid. There has, there has been a, a lot of. Uh, we have uh, uh, the developed uh, the planning of a high, uh, high uh, level corridor. It was not implemented, but it's the planning made for the this for solving this uh, lack of transversality among peripheries. And uh, uh, there's uh, been a, a, a bit a bit for electrification in the in the municipal fleets so it's been one of the protagonists of of, of this in the city of madrid in fact the the leading uh, the leading and the coordination has a, a lot to say yeah thank you do we do we have another question marlena maybe Yes, I think there is a question from Elizabeth Ada. We just have mm -hmm. the problem that uh, we cannot see the question itself. Uh, Mrs. Ada, would you would you mind to repeat uh, your question to Carlos? I think she cannot do this by her own. She needs to take oh. that or the question answers functionality. OK, then I'm yeah, ready. So as a participant, you cannot um, mute uh, uh, have audio here yeah that's okay. the problem okay okay so um 
that maybe we can fix this in between. I would like to ask you to for two or three minutes more um, just to present you very quickly um, a project which has started, the Dynexability for Central Europe project, where actually things developed in um, the low carb and the eccentric project will uh, be continued. So it's an experimental call um, for capitalization of the Central Europe Interact program. And uh, a lot of Interact projects, but also Horizon projects and other initiatives are combined here to really find synergies uh, and co-creation between projects to create new outputs and to capitalize on existing results. So uh, you can see here a, an overview of involved projects. Um, maybe just to explain what is actually the term Dynexability. It's, um, it's an artificial term uh, combined with uh, the, um, complexity, Dynexability, uh, dynamic and, uh, uh, and also the capability. So actually it's the capability to uh, plan sustainable mobility, in our case, in complex and dynamic environments, which is more and more the case for public authorities, public transport authorities, etc. Um, normally, these institutions are localized in a, let's say, lower medium uh, zone of dynamics and complexity, and it, but it's increasing. And uh, we see with all these new trends like digitalization, automation, mobility as a service, but now also with the COVID-19 disruption, that uh, there's a high or increasing complexity and dynamic in this area. And so we would like to find out with this project how to yeah, increase capacities of public authorities to plan for such uh, disruptions and these trends. Uh, and on the other hand, do not to forget really their sustainable mobility goals they have in their SUMP processes. So um, we focus here really on the topics of mobility as a service, cooperative, co uh, connected and automated mobility, but also um, more regulative objectives like uh, urban vehicle access restrictions and how this can be combined uh, and also contextualized once again. And this is a focus here in the Dynexability project, again, to the function urban area or to the peripheral districts um, perspective. So please have a look out for the Dynexability projects. Um, more to come here in the next two years, one and a half years, uh, where we would like to work on topic guides as well here um, for public authorities. And to maybe just mention uh, at the last slide or for the, with the last slide that actually, if you are interested to provide feedback and review also the topic guide. We're just about to finalize the first draft uh, in cooperation eccentric local project for the uh, topic guide planning for planning mobility for functional urban areas and peripheral, peripheral, peripheral districts. Um, let us know. So please contact us and we can uh, actually help you in this review process and we would be more than happy to do this. And if you have another minute, then I would just love to ask this last question to Carlos. So we managed um, to have the question by Elizabeth Eda. So I will just read it out. In a project, we face the problem that some municipalities in the surroundings of a bigger city don't realize that they have to actively plan and design mobility in their area. Mobility in their understanding is only planned and designed by federal train and bus providers, and they are not aware of the important topic of last first mile transport. Has any of the project faced similar problems and how did you deal with them? So maybe, Carlos, if you could yeah. try to answer this. Well, uh, this is the other the other challenge of the, our project was, in fact, it was about, uh, about uh, urban freight a clean urban freight and it's been one of uh i think we have uh, made very uh, uh interesting measures about it we have de developed some vehicles for this uh for uh, distribution last mile distribution we have uh, made uh, some uh, uh, proposals or, or or pilot actions especially in munich from uh, different uh, uh different uh, ways of of distribution the, 
the, the with the, the the goods and so on. so it's been one of the of the of the uh, the other the challenge of the project so i invite you to 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 visit our our set and to, and to go in detail in this mm -hmm. this very important problem and I'm, i and i agree totally with the with uh the the question usually it's not integrated this this uh problem in the in the planning in the mobility planning and not urban planning mm -hmm. and so we have a we will have a have a, a great deal of this okay. in our project thank you carlos so uh, yeah the invitation well, to well, visit you, the website yeah sorry sorry Volgan. do you think it would be just a half minute to to for the pole, the, the peripheral of pole, or do you think it's... Uh, I think we should skip this and maybe give Carsten okay. just the right. chance okay. to have a very short answer also to this question from your experience. All right, okay. Thank you, Carlos. All right, bye. Carsten, any last... Okay, thank comment? you for this, this opportunity, yeah. Um, the situation some way in some ways compares here um, as you remember uh, of one of my um, maps there was a yellow line going right through the uh, area and circled in red so that means um, a third of the entire area is associated to another city a, a smaller city in our peripheral region um, uh, they cannot um, tune the bus services themselves they are aware of that um, so my, so the, this situation compares a little bit to our situation. So one way to handle this is just approach the bus provider or the train operator. We have a luck here that is, that is regional organized. So bus services um, are organized by the district and the local trains are organized by this regional um, train authority we partnered with. So this is really um, easy to find the correct persons. And however, uh, the city of Scottis, the smaller city was aware of the problem and did their part in their work. So they, when they um, deal with new um, areas, they develop, they, we, we, we put the attention to build the, the, the pedestrian ways, build cycle ways, and they, are, they, are, they had this idea before and they follow our advices. So this is a very um, fruitful cooperation. To assist okay. you, yeah, in, invite the ones that they're referring to. So if it's not a problem, it's the others, so then invite the others. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Carsten. Here's also the invitation to Elisabeth to, to contact us uh, in terms of low carb results. And I think also maybe the self-assessment tool, I think it was shown in for the Krakow example, is very helpful here. Maybe that uh, this could be actually a first step to, let's say, yeah, start a fruitful conversation with these smaller surrounding communities. Um, yeah, we're at the end of the session. I would like to thank all speakers um, for the presentations, all participants to uh, stay tuned here. And yeah, wish you a very nice rest of the day, a good weekend, and hope to see you soon on uh, another channel. Thank you very much. Okay. Goodbye to thank all. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much.